Hey everybody, thank you for watching Test Tube Plus today. I am Trace and this week we are talking about genes, what they can do, what they can't do, and how to mess with them. In case you've never watched Test 2 Plus before, this is a show where we spend an entire week breaking down big science topics. It's sort of like a podcast style show, so feel free to slap on some headphones and put me on in the background. I'm not going to be offended. I've got my notes here on my computer, and I'm going to pull a lot of this out of my brain as well, so it should be kind of fun. So the present of genes is sort of like the future. I mean, when you think about flying cars and you think about rockets and space travel, you also probably think about genetic modification and genetic engineering. It's so connected with science fiction. And genetic modification, it's here. The future is now. GMOs, or genetically modified organisms, are everywhere. They're in every grocery store all over the world. There are some that were done through traditional breeding techniques, and those aren't technically considered genetically modified organisms. They're just breeding, so it's like a hybrid organism. But corn, for example, has specifically been bred and modified at the genetic level. A company named Monsanto took corn, and they took the bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis. They just called it BT in their research. Nailed it. Uh, they took the genes from that bacteria and they put it into the corn. Now that bacteria lived in a fungus in the corn, so it actually brought properties to the corn already. This is just a more direct way the company felt. And in doing so, that bacteria actually naturally destroys insects. So now that corn can fight those insects off, or that was the idea. So essentially, they genetically modified corn to be more of a pesticide on its own. That is a genetically modified organism. Maybe not as sexy as like a human spliced with a chimpanzee or you know, a dinosaur chicken or something, but it's still a thing and it's all over the world and it has changed how we get our food. There are also things that are a little more sexy like glowing plants where they've spliced phosphorescence into trees or smaller plants so that they glow at night. They even have done this not just with plants but with cats. I know it's weird, but they have made glowing cats. They've also made, and this one really creeps me out, goats that produce spider silk in their milk. They added spider genes to goat DNA, so when goats produce milk, they're also producing spider silk. The reason they're doing that is because spider silk is highly valued and very difficult to harvest. It's extremely strong, so now they can get it from something that produces milk all the time. They also created trees that grow faster for the lumber industry, plants that absorb more carbon dioxide so they can absorb more pollution and be a carbon sink. They created cows that fart less methane, 25% less. That's a lot less because methane is a terrible greenhouse gas. All of this is done with genetic modification. There's also things like gene therapy. Gene therapy is experimental. It's only really for dire, non-curable, incurable diseases. Essentially, these are for genetic problems. So if you have a gene that's malfunctioning and that's causing a disease in your body, they take that gene and they knock it out of the way and put in a functioning gene. It doesn't always work though, and it really only is beneficial for something like anemia or Huntington's, which is based on a single genetic problem. It is not great for things that are based on a variety of things ranging from environmental causes to genetic causes like asthma or cancer. So most genetic modification can be pretty normal and actually fairly helpful. Uh, people have different opinions on GMOs. Most of the world thinks they're okay. You can tell us yours if you'd like. We're always around on the internet. But how they do this regardless of how you feel about it, is super interesting. Essentially, researchers found out that retroviruses can edit DNA. In fact, they do that already. And some of our DNA in our bodies is viral DNA. Viruses that came in, took out parts of our DNA, put in some of themselves, and it's just been passed down for you know a long, long time. Viruses are not alive, but maybe they are. It's still a debate, but they're tiny bits of nucleic acid. Uh, DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, so when a virus being a tiny bit of nucleic acid connects with deoxyribonucleic acid, it can pull out or interface with our DNA. Retroviruses are RNA, not DNA, which is what DNA uses to copy itself. So when a virus goes up to DNA, it can copy part of it. 
Specialists replace the DNA in the retrovirus or the RNA in the retrovirus, so it alters a specific gene. Essentially, they're telling this RNA, instead of going to copy yourself and making lots more and you know, overwhelming the cell and bursting out and causing herpes or something, instead, here's a little chunk of DNA. Go do your viral thing, hook up to that DNA, and instead of putting in more herpes, put in a cure for this disease. The virus is inserted into the cell, and it copies like it normally would, but instead of messing up the DNA, it maybe creates better DNA. If you do this with a person, myself, if I injected something that this is what it was supposed to do, that is what gene therapy is. I'm knocking out that old gene, and I'm putting in, hopefully, a new gene. Doesn't always work, though. Now, if you did this on a tiny level with a fertilized egg, now you've created an altered genetic being. So when it came to producing that GMO corn, this is likely how Monsanto did that. There's actually a newer method that's even more efficient to do this that's got a lot of scientists super excited, and it's called CRISPR. CRISPR is so easy to do that scientists are actually worried. Essentially, you cut the DNA, then you add a new piece of RNA, and the DNA strand heals itself. When it heals itself, boom you have altered that organism. I know that sounds simple, it actually is. I know there's more science to that and it's way more in depth, but it's beyond my understanding to do. But from a molecular biological perspective, those scientists, it's simple. And that's scaring people because scientists in China used CRISPR to modify non-viable human embryos. They edited humans using this technique. And they showed that human DNA can be genetically modified with this. That's some scary stuff. I mean, we're talking what could happen if people start modifying humans. But we're not going to get too much into that. Today, you're going to have to come back tomorrow for that. So make sure you subscribe so that you can get more of these videos right in your inbox. And also, while you're waiting, check out these other videos from earlier in the week. We've got what a gene does, what a gene is, and what you can tell about our history from genes. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. We'll see you tomorrow.